How's it going everybody? Welcome to the first episode of Let's Have a Conversation. So this is going to be a new series on this YouTube channel where I bring guests onto the channel and we have a particular topic of the episode and yeah, we talk about that. So today's guest, you've already seen her amazing work. Uh, I've interviewed her for the creator's process. I have Nick of Bleeding Heart Prince. How are we today? Very good. Thanks, Jaden, for having me on your channel again. Ah, oh, it's my pleasure. Like, I think, I, I was saying this off camera before, that your interview that we did together actually inspired me to create this side series where we talk about particular topics that sometimes aren't talked about a lot, but, you know, just to go in-depth mm. talk and talk about, like, things that, you know, uh, resemble as artists, resemble as people, you know, yeah. and I think, yeah, I th so thank you for that. <laughs> oh, I'm so, so glad to continue our conversation because it was so, I, it really got me thinking last time, so thank you for uh, this, I'm really excited. Ah, that's it, it's my pleasure, and it was, it, I really found it fascinating myself, and I think like, when I got to editing the video, I was like, oh my gosh, it went for that long, I'm like, we talked it, for a while, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, because it, it, but it just went so quickly, yeah. like, it was like 40 minutes long, or even like the whole footage was 50 minutes long, and I just was like, really, what were we talking about that long? Because it just felt like it went so quickly. Yeah. And, but it was just so fascinating, because I think, you know, like, I love re-watching these clips, mm. and just going, oh man, like, I get to re-watch it again, but not just as someone talking, like, right now, but then also as a viewer as well, yeah. so that really made it fascinating for me to re-watch it. It's, and it's an archive that you can pick up on and look at later and sort of think, what were we talking about? Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. <laughs> that's it. And uh, so I guess for the viewers today, I'm probably guessing you know from the title of this video, uh, the topic is how art ma makes us feel. So a very, very straightforward one, but you can talk about for ages. So it's a very, very straightforward topic, but a very in-depth conversation. So, um, so I guess I think I've told you like the way that we're going to set it up, we're just going to talk about like, you know, specific artists that may have started our way of like getting into art, how they made us feel at the time and yeah, just go from there. Yeah, sounds good. So, um, I guess for like a starter question, let's, um, go from there. So I actually thought of this, um, this question. So what was for you, what was the, uh, before you started art, what was the first artwork that you saw that made you feel like, just feel something? Oh wow, this, yeah. oh, that's a good question. <laughs> oh my goodness, because like, it's so strange, like, you know, thinking about art, and even from a really young age, how much art has really touched me. So I guess, I'm not sure if last time I talked to you about this, but um, mum had this beautiful um, print of a Picasso from the Blue series. Okay. And it was a woman's back. Um, oh wow! And it's okay. just this beautiful um, painting, which yeah, I'm not even sure. I, I've got a, a whole lot of books here that I want to <laughs> sort of talk about, just to sort of illustrate the conversation. But um, she had it above her bed, and as a little girl, I would see it, you know, go into Mum's room and see this painting. And I was just so mesmerised by it. I, I felt, when I was very young, I didn't really know what it was. It was so abstract that you know. It was a beautiful shape of a woman, but it could be so many things. Like you, yeah. look at, you know, when you you see something that's like a figure, but you don't see the face. So the, the yeah. head was it was just like the, her shoulders and her the the curve of her back, and I just remember staring at it and thinking, I don't know how it made me feel. It just made me feel that's just so beautiful. Yeah. I love it. I, the colors made me calm looking at it, which is you know blues can make you feel very calm and yeah, like there's a calming, absolutely. but there's something sensual but I didn't understand what that meant at a young age yeah but you know you sort of start thinking about you don't understand it per se but you kind of I think art can one thing that art does really in, incredibly well is it expresses all the human emotions that you can possibly feel absolutely in and all of the artists that have existed since day one have expressed their emotions their story their experience through their art and even though I'm not a fan of Picasso as a human being, yeah. I am definitely a huge fan of his work and I think he, in, throughout his career he expressed so much emotion in, in the work he did. Absolutely. Um, and the periods that he went through, which is just, you know, like the blue yeah. period was just this very, it's just so gorgeous. It's like, um, it's, it's like romantic, it's love, it's sexuality in a series so um, mm. if for those who may haven't maybe you haven't seen that series definitely google <laughs> google um, Picasso's um, blue period because it's just a beautiful 
beautiful period of his art. Yeah. And it is really interesting. I think it was mm. like when you said that when you looked at the artwork, it could be anything. Like, mm. I think that's definitely a thing, even for me. Like, I remember <laughs> it was, I was looking at this one artwork and it was this drawing. And when I first looked at it, it looked like this, it was this line work where it was just this angel and it looked like an angel and I went to my friend who I was over mm. he probably knows who this is when I'm um, talking about it um, and I looked at it and I'm just like that is such an amazing artwork like and I just said it, it's like an angel piece mm. and he just started laughing at me and I'm just like what, what what why are you laughing and he goes look closely at what it is and I look closely and I'm like oh and I just I looked at it and it actually when you look at it it was a picture of a woman's uh, vagina oh, wow. <laughs> and so like it was down there yeah but when you looked at like my first glance yeah. it looked like this the way that the artist has created it was like this it just looked like an angel wow, that's and amazing. it's like so when you said that I just it reminds me of how like sometimes people see it in so many different ways it makes us feel things in so many different ways and it's uh, it's just really interesting yeah. how like art can make us feel like we're looking at one thing but then when it actually is something else. But then it's kind of like, well, if the artist is able to do that, that's actually achieved something more than just creating one image, it creates multiple images. So true. Do you know how old you were when you thought that it was an angel? <laughs> that was actually not that long ago. Was it? I think that's lovely. That's a lovely story. I like that because because art is like that. Like, it, mm. it, um, like okay, you just made me think of Georgia O'Keeffe. Go for it. So Georgia O'Keeffe, I'm really a fan of her work and, um, a lot of her work is very abstract, so... Oh, yeah. yeah. But, um, again, people would often say, like, I don't know if there's a piece I can show you that illustrates this, but... Go for it. This piece, okay. Oh. Okay, so this is called The Blue Line, and if you look at it, like, you can see so many things. So could it be a woman's, a part of a woman's body? I don't know if you can see this in the, yeah. in the video, but, um, like, I really love her work because often... I mean, the artist, so the artist's intention is interesting, like, um, was it an abstract piece? Was it a flower? Was it a human body? Was it a, a landscape? Mm. And then it might be expressed in the description here, but I don't always read the description. Like, you know, when you go to an exhibition, yeah. I don't, I tend to, mm. I find it interesting and I used to spend a lot of time reading, but now I've, <laughs> I've gone to the opposite side where I'll, I'll look at the, t um, the label to see who the artist is. If I don't know who the artist is, it may be the date because mm. just for interest sake, mm. but mostly I want to interact with the work. I want to yeah. spend most of my time looking at it and Absolutely. I want to think about it and see how it makes me feel just looking at it. Like mm. being, you know, looking at an artwork in a book compared to seeing it on the wall in a gallery. There's, you, you get a diff different feeling. You know how last time when we, when you interview, interviewed me last time, I was talking about de Kooning's work and how yeah. I would pour over his paintings in a book, and then I saw it on the at MoMA for the first time, and I was literally, mm -hmm. you know, just like so moved, like tears were pour pouring down my face. But the reason, you know, art is to be interpreted. The colors, yeah. the shapes. It to me, it's not about the label. Um, yeah, absolutely. You know, like some artists won't even give their work a, a title because no. they want you just to to you to respond to the work. They don't yeah. want to tell you how to feel about it. Like, absolutely. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So, yeah. like, like yeah. for example, Georgia O'Keeffe. Um, you know, art, a lot of people might react and say, "Look, that's that looks like a woman's body," or that might be a you know part of her. Um, you know, that might be her bottom, or you know, that might be. Yeah. A, it could, like you could interpret it in so many different ways. Um, yeah, that and, is really interesting. But even if she would, her intention was something different, some artists will be like, no, 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 that's not my intention. I didn't want you to see it that way. But I think truly, art, once it's out in the world, it's, it's Open out to inter there. interpretation, it, Exactly. Yeah. And I think, I like what you're saying about, you know, seeing something in, in your interpretation, immediately you're thinking, that's an angel. Like, to mm. me, that's an angel. but. That's what art is all about. It's yeah. meant to be your response to it and how you feel. Exactly. Yeah. And I definitely agree with you. Yeah. I'm actually the exact same person when I go to a gallery. <laughs> I will look at the artist. Yeah. But I would kind of sometimes leave out the description. Because for me, when you are given a description, you are then instantly go, okay, then that's what I have to see. But then yeah. when you don't look at it, it's what you feel when you first look at it. Like, I think I remember... Um, I can't remember who the artist was. If I remember, I'll put the link in it. But it was this work, this uh, 
work that was at the NGV a while ago and this artist has had put in a in a pool of water all these different size bowls. Oh, I remember that. Was yeah. that was that the tra last trainial? Like like three years ago or something? Yeah, maybe. Was it? Yeah. I've, yeah. I've forgotten who the artist and it made and sounds, did it? Yeah. It was beautiful. I remember that. That was lovely. I was standing there like I was sitting there for like twenty minutes just listening to it and kind of like for me it was like when, when I, because I obviously, at the end I did read the description, but mm. like my first instinct was kind of like those, you know when you're meditating mm. and you just have that chime that wit that you hit, yeah. and it like, it reminded me of that, and then when I read it, it was about the artist making music out of just everyday objects, and I thought that was really interesting, but mm. I think for me, it was my first instinct of going, it was kind of more the meditational feeling yeah. of just when you're in a peaceful atmosphere and all that, and I think I love to go into an artwork without the description, like just read what I see and then if I'm interested to uh, see what it's yeah. about, I will read the description. So I mean yeah. exactly the same, like yeah. I don't always look at, like I look at the title and then I look at the artist yeah. and then I just kind of yeah. interpret what I see because I, like as you, as mm. I said, like sometimes it actually, when you read it, you then are given the top, the context, and then yeah. it kind of goes, well, then it doesn't leave you an open space to improve of what exactly. you think it I, could be, but yeah. So true, and I think um, often when I read something, like a description that could be the artist's description, I prefer to hit an artist statement, because then I'm like, oh, this is what the artist was intending, which I'm more interested about than hearing what a curator thinks. Mm. So sorry about all the curators on my watching this video. <laughs> sorry, but, curators. <laughs> sorry that. It's more like, that's, the, that's just their, their thoughts, and it's like, their thoughts, yeah. you know, my my response is totally um, personal, and their response, to be, to be honest, it's their response, and it should yeah, be yeah. guiding, because I, I get, I always, um, when I go to a gallery, and you know how people spend a lot of time reading, and then they mm. don't, then they just glance over the work, so they'll read, 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 you can see them there for ages, yeah. reading, and then they'll just look at the work and like, they barely, yeah, like, they barely looked at it, like, exactly, and it, yeah. And I, I think um, you need to spend time with art to really feel anything. Like, Absolutely. If you just, if you saw that piece that you saw with the, you know, the bowls, and they were, and if you just went, oh, that's interesting, and like literally spent half a second and just walked past. You wouldn't have had the same responses, you know, exactly, how you thought it was yeah. relative and like I'm, you're hearing the sounds and you're spending time quietly listening and with the work, um, your your emotional response would be completely different. Mm. It would almost that you wouldn't even remember it. You would just walk past and yeah, it wouldn't even be something we would be talking about right now. So exactly, and it was um, I guess I'll, I'll have an, I had another work in mind where. And it was kind of funny, like from weird responses that you get mm -hmm. when I can't remember. This is the thing I sometimes don't remember the artist, oh, but yeah, like yeah. there was this artwork. I don't know if you remember at the NGV, and it was, it was. I remember it was on the top floor, and it was this, uh, excuse me, this room that you went into, and it was like I don't know what it was, but it was like this machinery that when you walked in, it, it triggered a sensor that made this loud, bright wow. sound, and made this loud sound. That sounds familiar. And I can't remember what it was. If I can find out, yeah, I'll put it in. But I remember, I didn't read the description. And this is the thing about like, sometimes if you don't yeah. read the description, I just walked into the room, I just saw this electrical equipment, and then suddenly the yeah. bright flashing light went out and I just like quickly flinched and it scared the <laughs> heck out of me. And I think for me, like if I was to read a, like a visual description, yeah. that would have like, I would have not gotten that same reaction. I yeah. would have kind of expected it yeah. to happen. And so I was kind of glad that I didn't because mm. it was like I laugh at it now because I'm just like I I, I jumped know. going like yeah. going like, like it's something yeah, yeah, yeah something was gonna attack me but yeah. it was it made me think about like was that the artisan um uh, that's what he wanted like yeah. is that or he or she wanted yeah. um was that their intention to kind of go like oh I wanted to scare some people <laughs> yeah, yeah. Give so you a response like exactly you know, it so sounds like an almost audio like an experience yeah. like. Like the mid, you know, like the kinetic artists that would use, like there was like a machinery kind of element to it, and, and it, yeah. like, it, it surprises you when you come into a space and see your work moving that much because, <laughs> you know, normally you know you, you expect to see, like things have changed a lot, and you know there's so much more Absolutely. installation work, and we, you know, like I just went to the triennial um, at MGB yesterday for the second time, and I love, oh, oh my yeah. god, it's so good. Um, but there's like every type of art that you can imagine like there's you know digital there's sculpture mm -hmm. painting there's like 
a room where you can go, I don't know who the artist is, but there's a room where you can just, you have to go in the room and you have to hum. You can't go in the room without humming. That's uh -huh. just, which is fascinating. That's so there's no work there. It's just the idea, it's just a sign saying to enter this room, you have to hum. I have to find out who this artist is. Yeah, that that's is, like, interesting. It was funny because there wasn't many people in the room because I think they didn't know what to do. Like, but there was a lovely um, security guard there sort of saying, encouraging people. And he's like, come in, hum, hum. You just have to hum. Okay. And the funny thing was I went in there and I started humming and then I'm like left. And I was like, the humming was in my head. So I kept humming <laughs> yeah. afterwards. So it kind of got into my head. But yeah. that is so joyful and playful. Like art can be anything. Like mm. art can literally make the viewer have to make a response so normally yeah. we can be kind of passive like we we can listen and be engaged and things but it doesn't mean we have to do any we don't have to do anything per se you know what i mean like normally we look at it and we respond and we listen and yeah. we watch and look but in that case the artist was asking the viewer to hum yeah which just is something just, basic yeah. and straightforward it's so and fascinating it's... I, I just thought that was amazing like i've never seen i've never experienced anything like that, that yeah like I'm gonna end that's still yeah. at the end of me now. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna have to check that out. You have to check it out. It's really I think it's for a little while, so it's okay, there until cool. like mid April. So check yeah. it out if you haven't. It's a great exhibition. But yeah, like I think um, I'll, I'll mention like there was this for me. Um, this was probably my origin of the first art that made me feel it was like it was actually at the NGB as well. And that artwork, I think, is still here to this day, which is crazy because that was like nearly ten years ago, or maybe even more. But like I was when I was. I think 12, 11 years old, because that was the first time I was into, like, I interacted with art. Like, I went to my first gallery in primary school, and we had the, the tour guide took us to this room of these amazing portraits. And the portrait that really grabbed my attention was Do you know the Banquet of Cleopatra? That does sound very. Yes, I do, um, I do. Yes, yeah, it's and, beautiful. Oh, it's an absolutely yeah. spectacular piece. And I remember yeah. first it was this thing that covered up the whole wall. Yeah. And anyway, the one thing that stood out for me was the tour guide said, if you look at the, the floor, the, 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 somehow the artist was able to make the floorboards look like they're moving as you're walking across. And so that really stood out for me because like I would go back and forth and the floors were just following you. Wow. <laughs> they were just following you it's as they went along. Yeah. And amazing. so, and it was really, and I think for me that was when I came across the first time capturing a moment and like doing actions in artwork. So that's for me why even in my own work, I like to capture a specific moment of like when something is happening and all that sort of thing. So that was one of the first artworks cause you know, it captures Cleopatra. Um, so the, the, the story of that artwork was the, uh, I think she was having a competition between her and another leader about who could have the most expensive banquet. And all she did was grabbed one of her pearl earrings and dropped it in, I think it was like vinegar, and then drank it. And you know, because during that time, pearls were priceless. Yeah. So she was like, you know, I just drank the most expensive <laughs> drink. And then while, and so like that was capturing the moment where she was holding it over the drink wow. and then was about to drop it. But you know, for me, that was like, and then all around the people around surrounding it were, it was their reactions and capturing their reactions. So for me, that really stood out because mm. it was kind of like, you know, art capturing a moment. Mm. in you know a moment in what was happening like a, and, a almost like a photographer just like clicked and took a photo of that moment yeah, yeah exactly and I think mm. for me that really triggered of like telling a story mm. as well telling you know because for me art has always been about you know telling a story yeah. and you know I I think for me at a young age that really spoke to me yeah. because I've I even said in another video that during when I was younger I wanted to be an author before I wanted to be an artist, so I've always loved telling stories. So I feel like that storytelling part then was uh, taken into my art. Yeah. And so that was really interesting. So it's always been something that's, um, I felt and really spoke to me yeah. during art. And I yeah. think that was always really nice. I think that's really interesting that you wanted to be a, a writer because, you know, artists are visual storytellers. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a, you know, without words necessarily, yeah. you know, tell stories. So. During and, art, yeah. Yeah, and like photographs illustrate stories beautifully. And um, I just want to tell you, we're, just, we're just talking about um, Cindy Sherman, and you, you're also an admirer of her work. Oh, I you? love Cindy Sherman, she's great. She's amazing. <laughs> I, I, you know, her series that she did in like 1978 or sort of 79. Yeah. This black and white series that she calls film stills. So 
um, they're not actually real films, so that they're her own yeah. imagination, which I think is beautiful. Um, and I love, like, because the reason why I thought to talk about it, talking about storytelling, so she was interested as a young girl, her, her family had like a, a chest with lots of costumes as a child. She would dress up and act, you know, like be, be a else. character. Yeah. yeah. And um, was very imaginative. And she said that kind of started, you know, that that has pretty much driven her whole career. Um, the way she expresses herself is by dressing herself up, which mm. I think it's sort of an interesting idea of identity, yeah. emotions. Like she's able to be someone else in a photograph and express emotions like you know there's images of her crying look she looks like she's sobbing and there's like mascara covering yeah, her face yeah which are really powerful images and they look the reason why they you know she's so highly influenced by film that they, they look like an image of a woman you know in a scene in a film where she's just mm. heartbroken for example yeah um but i, I remember first seeing her work in high school because we had a dark room at high school and mm -hmm. I, I was in there most of the time, <laughs> you know, even lunch times and things. And I just, I, th I was really, I really admired the way she expressed emotions through herself, but as different people, like a character, a caricature yeah. of herself. Or I mean, it's probably she's accessing emotions that she feels, but yeah. she's doing it through a character. Absolutely, it's yeah. It's really fascinating. And it is, yeah. You know, we were talking before about, you know, artists' intentions um, the fact that she, her film, you know, her photographs often have no titles, so she might just say, yeah. no, title number one, I, you know. Number um, 50, 52, yeah. Exactly. And I, I mean, and she has to do that because she's got so many photos and, you know, she's, oh, yeah. a, she's a commercial artist as well. Her photos are being sold and, mm. you know, she makes a living from her work. Absolutely. Yeah. But I love that she doesn't um, put a description per se, like a, a, a title to it even. It's mm. just... It's left, left for your, your interpretation, like how do, you, yeah. how do you feel when you look at this image, you know, um, later on in her work, I really like, because she's a really huge horror fan, which, yeah, uh, you know, she which was. is so cool, yeah. yeah, and she made a horror film, Office, Office Killer, which I actually, oh, really? I okay. studied it a few years ago for Women, Women in Horror Month, which is in February, at, oh, um, nice, Mel oh. so Melbourne Horror Film Society, for anyone that checked yeah. that out, but this, like, she did this gorgeous, like, you can tell that she's got like mm. she's influenced by horror. Um, the lighting is just so exquisite in her work. Yeah. So this work is from what year? It's 1981, so a couple of years oh, later. Wow. And yeah, like she did this amazing, you know, this series of um, color series, which it kind of brought a whole other dimension to her work. And I just think they're just amazing. And you just wonder how much she's feeling. Like, yeah. And she transforms herself. Like, so amazing. You know, like, this one person is able to express so much um, through changing costumes, her hair, but her face is so expressive. Like, there's a strong intense. Oh, I've seen that one. Yeah. Um, there's a strong intensity in the, mm. these works. Like, you know, you fear for her, you know, and it's like you're just wondering what. Like, for example, in yeah. this one, you know, I look at it and it's kind of like, you know, who's she looking at, you know, yeah. is it someone that's going to give, show her harm, was it someone that's going to help her, you know, it's exactly. like, it, it kind of, you, your mind goes on a bit of a mind boggle, and you kind of, you start feeling what she's feeling, and I think, mm. like, when I studied her in university, so, like, we would study a different person every week, and Cindy Sherman was one of them, and I thought it was really mm. interesting how this, just this one person, because it was funny, the first, my first reaction when I saw her work was, who like you know I was like looking at all these different artworks and I'm like oh they like I wonder who you know how she got all these models and then I read I was like it's the same person I'm like what I'm like this is the same person because like someone it doesn't look like her like I remember yeah. the the one that really stood out for me was the when she dresses as a woman really tanned woman oh, like yes. yeah they're crazy aren't they and yeah it doesn't look like her yeah. when you actually see what she looks like in real life and then you yeah. see all these other different ones. It's just amazing how she's able to just transform into this completely different person. And I think for me, it really mm. spoke to me because as you said, mm. like she always focuses on portraying a different character. Mm. And you know, for me growing up, I I sometimes went through stages where, you know, when I didn't feel like myself, so I would pretend up here to be someone else. And so that really speaks to mm. me as a human and as a lot of other people because I realized mm. When I was having a conversation with my mum about this, she said that she used to do that. So it was kind yeah. of something that was, you know, uh, kind of like that ran in the family yeah. there where we 
would always pretend that we were someone else and someone completely different. And so I think I love how she would do this in her own art because it resembles to me that, you know, I wasn't the only one that felt like, you know. A bit of a struggle to find identity in who you are. Yeah. And I honestly totally relate to what you're saying because I think, you know, when you're young it's hard, but when you, I think in my 20s it was really hard to find. It's hard to find yourself as a human. Oh, like I knew, I always knew that I was into art and I, I love art, something I do, and, um, but st sort of struggling to find your identity. I think Cindy Sherman, that's why she's probably um, spoken to so many people, understand, because she expresses that kind of human condition that we all have of like, we might have different parts or aspects to our personality that we don't always get to explore, but she does it through her art. I think that's what artists do, like they get to express, you yeah. can express, you know, different emotions, how, how you feel, different, like different aspects of your personality that you don't always Absolutely. get to, you know, like, you know, here she's sort of depicting herself as a woman waiting for a phone call, it feels like, yeah. you know, or she's just had a horrible phone call, but it, yeah. you know, there's so much like emotion on her face, like she, mm. she is... A master. If she wasn't an artist and a photographer, she could have been an actress. I think. Oh, absolutely. Honestly. You could definitely see that acting style coming out of her. Yeah, definitely. But She's just a remarkable artist. And yeah, I know what you're talking about, the later sort of period when she did, like she'd do really, um, <laughs> like sometimes she would even put oh, like yeah. different kind of, co um, she would kind of give herself wrinkles or she would put different kind of body suits on to cha change the shape of her body as it, well. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And that's why when, you know, as I said, when I first studied her work, yeah. I'd see this once and I'm like, this is the same person. Exactly. You can, you can honestly, without reading about her, like it's so easy to think like she must have a lot of models that she works yeah, with. Yeah, exactly. Know? And like, I love when she just goes uh, really yeah. crazy with the, These are know, the ones that I saw. Yeah. They're really amazing. And if you follow her now on, um, She's on Instagram. She oh, does really? even more really weird things like digitally with her face. So now she kind of um, manipulates her face to do weird things that it doesn't look almost, it looks human, but not, it looks strange. Mm. Um, so the, so she was also interested in um, oh, like yeah. kind of, an, you know, like anatomical things that you get from a hospital or like, yeah, you know, that's right. so she collects them as well and uses yeah. them. And like, like these sort of where she's, I think she's almost got like a, you know, like a pig like face that she's yeah. added to her face, so she really doesn't look like herself. And I love how she uses texture and lighting. Mm. And it is like a film, like you can see that she's a horror, huge horror. Oh, nerd, absolutely. Like, um, but yeah, really an am amazing human. And oh, just, absolutely. Definitely. And she was definitely one of those people that stood out for me during those weeks where I would study one person. The other person I think I said oh, off yeah. uh, topic was Francesca Woodman, and yes. she would. She was another self-portrait person. She created these beautiful images in black and white. But the way that she would do it is like, she would always pose with like something else. Like she, there were some where she would be posed next to a mirror, it would be up against a wall and then she would be come, kind of coming around it and be looking into it. Mm -hmm. And then um, all these other ones where she'd be hanging off door frames mm -hmm. and all these other things. Interesting. And um, every time I look at it, kind of just that whole thing of just trying to blend into your surroundings or even just kind of like the self, uh, uh, what's the word, um, self, uh, gosh, kind of like when yeah. you're sort of self effaced or like you kind of, mm. there's people that really kind of inter, what's the word, internalize and, and someone, I think someone that does a lot of self portrait work, they're looking inwards a lot. Yeah. Do, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Um, and kind of analyzing themselves and thinking, it's interesting, like it's, it must be confronting to do that for a long Absolutely. period of time. Like Cindy Sherman has done this for many, many, many years. Mm -hmm. You know, I think, um, I think that's brave in itself, mm -hmm. but also you can see why an artist would do it. Like it makes sense in some ways, like especially when they start out, when, when an artist starts out um, mm -hmm. struggling, you know, financially struggling to, to make ends meet. And you know it make it can make sense to use yourself as the subject, absolutely. But to continue on even when, once you've reached success, it's amazing. It's sort of become oh, the practice that you how you yeah work. yeah. And it's like the I think the other one I really loved as well with the you know expression of who that person was was uh, I'm having a mind blank. <laughs> oh gosh, of um, artists uh, the uh, 19, 1900s, the Mexican artists. Uh, 
she you was... You talking about Frida Kahlo? Or... That's yes, it. yes, yes, yes. Yeah, but I, I don't her. know why I couldn't think of that. No, no, you just had a mental blank. There's so um, many wonderful artists. But yeah, like she was yeah. one I studied in high school and yeah. just the way that like I would study deep into her artworks and every mm. time she would... Like the only reason why she always did self-portraits was because, you know, she was bedridden after her accident. So the only person she would be looking at is herself in a mirror. Mm. And I read somewhere that like she would always have a mirror at her bed yeah. so that when she was painting on the bed she would look at herself wow. and so it really is interesting because it's kind of like a self expression of that person and then she I remember the one artwork that really stood out for me was it was her on a bed and then these lines kind of going up mm. into the sky and there was different body parts and actually each thing represented when she was in her accident, like there was a fetus in one of the things because during because of the accident she couldn't have kids anymore. Uh, another thing was uh, like you know all the damages that she did to her body from that accident, and so each thing was a representation of that, and it was just such a powerful yeah. image because you just look at the way that she looked in their painting, and just all these different things, and you just really. Yeah it hit home because you, you could feel her pain yeah. of like all these different things that happened to her and being yeah. bedridden for so long and it was just mm. and, and how it impacted her you could see that through her yeah. expression through her portraits that she would do of herself i think it's just yeah i'll just i think i've got her in here oh yeah she's she, she like the what happened to her was so um disfiguring like literally oh, it being, was. you know almost being impaled she was impaled essentially through mm. the middle um, like, you know, oh, just like, I just can't believe the poor, what she went through, honestly, is um, beyond um, what you would think any human being could possibly survive. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, I just think, I agree with you, she, her work is so powerful because she expresses her, her, um, her pain, her kind of, her struggles, her yeah. struggle, and I'm sure, like, anyone that has suffered any kind of, like, accident of that oh here this is gorgeous oh this yeah is beautiful so this is what year was this yeah this is gorgeous work self-portrait with monkey 1938 yeah. interesting i wonder if this was before her accident so but i love all of her portraits i don't know what year her accident was but yeah it was she must have oh, i wonder it, if it talks about it here yeah it was quite a like it was in I think it was her midlife, like, you know, during, like... Interesting. Yeah, like that... Like, it wasn't, like, early, but it was, like, mid-life okay. that it happened, and... Yeah. But, yeah, no, it was it just... Been... Yeah, it would have been awful, like, oh, it just no. would have been so awful to go through that, and I think yeah. the way that she was able to uh, portray that feeling of, um... how she was feeling during yeah. that time... Like, something so, like so traumatic mm. um and to share that through her art yeah. and anyone else that might be expressing you know if experiencing kind of trauma could feel like could look at her work and maybe i don't know there's something like a, that solidarity that you might feel with someone else that has experienced something and, and so absolutely um yes. incredible but yeah there are just so many people who have um been able to portray that through like uh, another one who i just thought of was well van gogh like yeah. another tragic story of yeah. and i remember researching into him like the his well most popular work starry night yeah there's so much it's surprising to read like even though it's such a beautiful piece of work there's so much pain behind yeah. that artwork because i i remember reading somewhere he the way that he portrayed his emotions was through his art so if it was very mm -hmm. still it would be on one of his good days, but then if it's like all wavy and all over the place, that would be one of his mind days where he just felt like really an emotional wreck, which, so it's really interesting because Starry Night was one of his emotional wreck days where I think he was in a hospital and just looking outside and then he just painted what he was seeing. And, but it's just such a, a beautiful interpretation of just how, how we feel when we're portraying these emotions and then how people see beauty through it, but then they can see the struggle as humans and like he's another artist who really spoke to me, especially the Starry Night was like just these beautiful waves mm. and of blue, the a colors. bit of a, a bit of a calming sense. But then also as art shows, blue can also be a sadness. Yeah. And True. that's all it is. Like it's this blue and black dark yeah. sadness, and you could see that there was something going on up here with him. But then also there's something beautiful in his work that you are seeing. 
Yeah. And so yeah. it is very tragic, but like it's a kind of like a tragic beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's like I think it's turbulent too, isn't it? The kind of way the stars are moving. Like you can, even though it's a two-dimensional work, like you know how that we we're talking about before about optical illusions that yeah. can do that. If you look at it, it, it almost feels like it's moving. It does. Like, slide, like just it? the. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, he must have been feeling such turbulent feelings uh -huh. internally. Um, and interesting because we know so much about him because he wrote to his brother so yeah um, and you know we know a lot about what he what he was feeling mm. because he expressed that in his letters um, yeah and it was like I, I think the one thing that I was so excited about when I was in London in 20 uh, what was it 2017 2018 mm. Um, I actually got to see up front in the London Gallery sunflowers mm. and some of his other work and it was just like, I just stood there just admiring it just for a <laughs> long time because you know, when you see an artwork mm. in person, it was just an absolute beautiful piece of art. Like it just looked amazing. The and, are like, and the thickness of the paint is like, oh, wow. Mm. Yeah. And it's, He's amazing, isn't he? Oh, absolutely. And it's like, I think at that same gallery exhibition, you know, talking about another artist who I admire is Da Vinci. Mm. I saw um, Madonna on the Rocks. Oh. And it's this beautiful, big artwork that just mm. scales across the wall. And you just see all the detail of, you know, obviously Madonna just with uh, St. John the Baptist mm. and Jesus next to it. And it's just this beautiful, dark imagery, but it's just so amazing just the brush strokes that the way that da vinci painted it it's just oh, like it just took my breath away I, I i swear i was standing on that standing in that mm. picture for like 15 minutes yeah. just admiring it because you know like when you yeah. look at it on a screen to when you see it in person it's you get two different like yeah. different reactions like <laughs> yeah, and it's presence almost like yeah by being in the flip like seeing the artwork in the flesh yeah, you know, like, exactly. It feels like you're almost close to where the artist was standing because yeah. the artist you're standing in front of the painting where the artist was. Mm. Um, and I think works like Da Vinci speak mm. to me because you know how you know beautiful they're centuries old, mm. and and we're still admiring these beautiful works to this day. Yeah. And he would have no idea the emotion he has created by these works for mm. so millions of people. Oh, uh, for over centuries, it's just, I think that's moving just thinking about like mm. being around something that's old. Yeah. In, in, in the presence of something that's old. Um, it's amazing. It's a moving feeling. It's so, yeah, I, I t honestly, I understand what you're saying. I do, you know, I, I think um, when I saw Mona Lisa, um, <laughs> and you know when you try and see it but you can't, you don't have, it's such yeah. a crazy experience, like there's a zillion people around it, everyone's trying to photograph it like paparazzi, mm. and, and all I want to do is be able to stand, I mean, like, in my mind, I just love to be alone with the painting, like if that was possible, that would be heaven, but um, just, it's hard to feel anything because you're standing so far away from it, there's like a zillion yeah. people, and all this noise, but I just would love to be, mm. you know, there, I, I, the, when I saw the Sistine Chapel, it was oh, like so, uh, it was yeah. amazing, and, and it was <laughs> like it was like I'm going into a music festival. There were so mm. many people packed in to get in there, but the, all you have to do is look up. Yeah. So you can look up, and you can have your own just quiet time, like try and stand somewhere and just like almost meditate. So you can like cut out all the sound of other people talking, the chatter, the the flash of people taking photos or not supposed to be taking photos and then securing mm. the sound and then just like cut all that out and just look up yeah. and see that and just think oh my god yeah. oh my god I'm in like in the presence of absolute genius like absolutely yeah like I, he's yeah I, I have to give him a lot of credit to me as well he inspires a lot of my work as well like yeah for example the Sistine Chapel that was another work I studied where just reading about his his struggles mm. of creating that artwork and especially like you mm. like I'm I, I was spewing that I couldn't go to see it when I was in Italy and so I'm one so day. jealous. Yeah. One day. Yeah, yeah. one day hopefully. One day. Yeah. And um but you know the way that you know because it's probably really high up the yeah. ceiling the because like I remember reading that he had to create this this like tripod ladder wow. that um went all the way up but then he would have to create each thing in blocks yeah. so like he would do block to block to block yeah. and he would have to layer this like the the thing was he had to layer it out and then paint it in yeah. blocks and lie probably like get up there but lie on your back with the paint yeah, above like, you can you like imagine that. like the paint would be like cut you would be oh. covered in paint 
And yeah. like he and he would have been working with like he would have had lots of assistants to help him. Like he is mm. the person that's like supervising everything. It's his vision and his paint. But mm. he would have had help because that that is a huge Huge yeah. surface to paint, like it's massive. It's, oh, it's it amazing. Is. It would have been scary painting up, like it is so really high up and just kind of yeah, yeah, like it's amazing. Yeah, and it's just the amount of detail that he put into it, mm. and you just think, how the heck would you be able to detail mm. by just doing that? Because exactly. like, and I think it was like he would be doing per day hours, like wow. it would just be like maybe twelve hour days or something like that, just going like that. So imagine yeah. just doing that, and it was like I think. Yeah. The completion was two years later, wow. so he'd be doing that for <laughs> two years. And I'm just like, and still keeping your vision that whole time, and, oh, and you know, yeah. it's amazing. Like that takes a lot of passion mm -hmm. to do something like that. I think, like, Absolutely. I've never done it. I never done a work that's taken me two years, so I could oh, no. imagine. <laughs> but imagine, like, that would be, a, you know, something. It's something deeply personal and and also how satisfying it must have been for him to see it after it's done just going ah, just going oh, done I've done it I've done it it's beautiful <laughs> but um I actually have to say and this will probably be a very controversial thing to say <laughs> like when I because I did see the Mona Lisa as well mm -hmm. and <laughs> <laughs> what was your response <laughs> Total disappointment. <laughs> yeah, because, was it because it was such a small painting? Or, yeah, yeah, like because you know, mind you're thinking it's bigger. Yeah, yeah. And, and it was kind of like I thought <laughs> when you look at it on a screen, it's like, oh my gosh, this looks so beautiful. And then I looked at, it, I'm just like, oh, wow. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that's very small. It's not much and fanfare so, around it either, is it? It's just yeah. like on the wall, and there's just like a zillion people trying to mm -hmm. see it because they know it's famous. Um, yeah, but, but then yeah. it's like they don't really, you'd think that they don't know much about it no. and that it's just more about the fame and I think for yeah. me I got more fascination by looking at like, you know, Madonna on the Rocks yeah. to John the Baptist that yeah. he did and you know, it's that one where he's got the cross and he's pointing up and yeah. I think a lot of his works and I think it's such a basic pose and I think maybe that's why because I always love to create dynamic poses mm -hmm. where it's like very simple and all that mm -hmm. but like it's such a basic just standing sitting pose which yeah. I still respect the yeah. artwork but I think I love a lot more Da Vinci's other works yeah. that he did where it was just these beautifully posed yeah. and um, a lot of my work is you know based around like just the classical you know pose of just standing up where mm -hmm. like I was reading somewhere where someone if a person was pointing up like that it was pointing to God you know mm -hmm. just pointing to and it was like just something as basic as that, mm. you know? And that's how they would portray that. And it's just amazing just mm. how he would. And then I, I think I actually also got his, uh, a book when I was in Germany where it was his sketchbook of like how he would sketch out and just the way that he would go from detail to detail. Wow. It's just amazing. And just like, just from one hand gesture, it was just like, you know, he would have the outline and then he would just do in the details and of the, little um, details of the skin and just the wrinkles and everything. I'm just like, oh my gosh, that's like the skin, amazing. The skin glows. Oh, it does. Isn't There's a glow it to it. I, I mm. just think, oh, how do they do it? How yeah. do they do that? It's like, it literally <laughs> shines out at you. Like it, it, yeah. kind of, it forces you, if you're in a dark space, to look to, it, to that glowing face. Mm. Um, I, I think how um, skin is painted over time is, you know, I really respect how they do that. Yeah, yeah. and it was, especially during the, like, that era of the Renaissance, mm. there was a lot of, because, like, you know, the whole thing with Renaissance was creating a realism to, um, I remember because the movement was all about realism, bringing that realistic mm. thing to artwork, mm. and a lot of artists did do that, like, more shine on the skin and all that sort of thing, but then it kind of, like, over time it kind of, you know, changed into something else, mm. but during that time it was like such an iconic thing mm. where you would make this skin look glow and you can almost you know, see the like the veins and you exactly, know, the veins. Yeah. yeah. They focus a lot on detail, like a very detailed uh, uh, art movement, and I think that was really fascinating for me. And yeah. I think that really stood out because I love the the realism feel when you mm. look at upon these beautiful artworks mm. of. Um, just how people would interpret like specific mm. stories and all that and I think one of the things that really fascinated me was <laughs> that uh, the, the, the image of Jesus um, that was actually that image came from that era and from around that era and it's so interesting how like they would portray him with a beard with long hair and all that but like people really don't know what he looks like because in mm. the Bible and never Actually, because I've like when I create artworks, I always like to 
read where I'm coming from. So I have read the Bible mm. to interpret these ideas and it never really depicts on what he actually mm. looked like. So it's really fascinating because that's, you know, that image came from like those errors. Yeah. And, but that we don't actually know what he looks like, yeah. which is really interesting. And that's it's, uh, fascinating. And, um, but yeah, like that era really, for me, is kind of like how it made me feel about art, just the storytelling, mm. just taking my breath away. And it was just like, oh my gosh, like I, I want to, I said, sometimes I've even said to people, I'm like, I feel like I was born in the wrong era. I think I should have been born in that era because I'm a storyteller as well. So I'm like, oh my gosh, imagine being in that era of like the storytellers and you know, oh, <laughs> all that. The rebirth, like, you know, Renaissance, like it's so interesting thinking about it because I'm, I'm not religious at all. Yeah. But, um, being around religious art, it does make you feel there's like an otherworldliness to it. Like there's something, it does, it can uplift you. And I think the reason it uplifts me personally, because I'm not religious, is because the artists uplift you with their, the beauty of what they're creating. Yeah. All the emotion, all the t turmoil, or, you know, death, um, mm. sorrow, destruction, um, you know, it's just, there's so much emotion that is captured through religious art because of the turmoil and the kind of drama of yeah. that story. Um, so yeah, I, I totally, I understand what you're saying. Like when I see, you know, when we went through, traveling through Italy, you see a lot of, you know, Renaissance art. And after a while I was traveling with my sister, we're like, oh, another cute dude. Oh, and we were just like being silly because we see so much art. You know what I mean? Because it's like, yeah. I was like, oh, I like that dude's hair. And you know, it's like, that's, that dude's Jesus, you know, like he's not a dude. Um, but yeah, we were just kind of joking with each other because it was so overwhelming just seeing so oh. much art. Like, um, but um, seeing David and just getting like, at the, oh, you know, yeah. seeing the end, end of the, and he was just glowing. I could see a whole sea of people before I got to him. And when I got up to him and seeing him up close, um, that was so moving and and just blew my it didn't it it didn't um, disappoint. Yeah, that that is an experience too, where you oh, you know, you go up close, like you see it from a distance and you're getting closer and closer as you walk up to it. And then again it's that thing of trying to block out the noise of other people because mm. you're just trying to have this personal yeah. moment or experience with the work that you've really admired for a long period of time. Um, but again you need to just look up because it's this it's on a high just, pedestal. Yeah. And so it doesn't matter that there's all these people around you can just like block that out and look up and just see him and you know i just kind of walked around and i walked around and then i didn't want to leave like i, I was yeah. photographing him from every angle because i was just <laughs> wanting to capture this so i can look at it again you know um, it's this beacon of light it's, it's like oh there he is. Like, is he definitely he definitely didn't disappoint when i saw him in the mm. flesh i just i just thought it's just a, a masterful piece um it, it blows your mind that, you know, it, a human could create such an amazing piece Absolutely. like that. It's just um, beyond measure, but, you know, that it's, okay, like, segue into something else. I, I can have that same kind of response to Joy Hester's work, for example. Joy Hester's, yeah. Um, well, sorry. Don't think I know that. So, she, she's an amazing, she didn't really get recognised during her lifetime, but she no. had a really, again, another poor, really tragic figure. Like she had, um, she had a, a tragic life in many ways, but also she she is amazing. So, um, really highly recommend um, if you can. Okay. Some, yeah. I've got books about her because I've sort of seen a few works of hers. Um, there was a, a love exhibition at the Immigration Museum, oh, wow. and that was really moving because the love exhibition was about. Um, the story of couples and their love stories um, and Joy Hester was one of those stories so she had you know in, an interesting life um, you know she she really I think she struggled like she lived she was around a lot of artists so mm -hmm. you know but personally this is really strange at the time she was an artist that didn't you know paint per se like she does paint with watercolors and she uses charcoal, but at the time that wasn't considered, like you're not really considered an artist unless you paint, which oh. is yeah. so alien to us now. Which That is really interesting. Yeah. So this is this this painting, for example, is from 1949. It's called Love Heart Group. And um, I just think she conveys love in just so one image so beautifully. 
And I love how she focuses not necessarily on the mouth, but the eyes. So the oh, eyes yeah. are connecting. So whenever I see her work, I, I just, I, I'm in love with her work. <laughs> I'm in love with her. I think she's just absolutely remarkable. And one of the unsung Australian artists. Yeah, has, wow. has, she's starting to get acknowledged now, which is fantastic. So that's awesome. Which is good to hear because like Heidi, um, the Heidi Museum of Modern Art has um, recently exhibited her work. And I'm, I'm really thankful to see that she's getting a bit of recognition. Acknowledgement, yeah. Yeah, because during her life, she wasn't really acknowledged for her genius. But her, the, the thing that I guess I respond to her work again, um, what's this word called? love 1949 so she, <laughs> i love her portrayals of love and it's you know you can see two people like and their eyes i think it's to, to me it looks like two people connecting and there's like the eyes are kind of overlapping so she, in her work it's like the art it's a lot to do with the eyes and you know how people say like your eyes are like your window to your soul mm. um i believe it doesn't matter what type of artist we're talking about and the ability of the artist, if they can convey so much emotion through eyes, in her case, through simple gestures, like through beautiful, um, simple ways of seeing things. Um, she really, I think, like her eye, the eyes are bulging and they're looking upwards, which I yeah, just, see yeah. how they're connecting again? It's really interesting. It's like she thought, Love isn't expressed through the lips, it's, you know, it's not through <laughs> kissing necessarily, it's like through looking at each other. It's yeah, because you can tell a lot from someone when you meet them from their expressions, mm. you can just tell a lot. And it's interesting how, yeah, I can definitely see that she is depicting people through these different ways of, you know, the way that they look to the way, you know, there's the eyes and all that sort of thing because yeah from eyes you can tell a lot from yeah, people's eyes i think so too um like you can tell if someone's being honest with you in a way or, absolutely or, being, or genuine being genuine with you yes yes um someone that you could trust or someone that you might like but um like her work is really interesting <laughs> this is really cool man and woman in bed and the man is like Kind of a dark figure oh yeah you know? i was like where? <laughs> where where's the man and and the lady she looks like she's smiling in a yeah really right there cheeky cheeky look and her eyes are looking <laughs> kind of sideways like a bit you know kind of shady you know how it's, <laughs> it's like yeah. that it's kind of, i love it and how much like just i saw this work um at the heidi recently and i was standing in front of it and i it just made me smile immediately i thought she's been really <laughs> mischievous like and she keep with her work, yeah. <laughs> but it's so much. So she can express so much with the lines and the color choices and her brush strokes. In this case, it looks like you know she's painting. I think she might have been using watercolors and ink and things like that. Um, her work was often her early work in particular was like on kind of like butcher's paper and things, mm -hmm. and it's just like amazing because you know it survived. There's some, later on she used canvases and things sometimes, but. Um, I just think it's remarkable how much emotion and how, you know, that they're, first of all, that they're surviving these works are really delicate. Yes. But they're surviving, but she was able to convey so much feeling through her beautiful yeah. abstract work. And the fact Absolutely. You know, just I, like this piece. Like, oh, that's it's a mother and child, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. That's, oh, that's adorable. Isn't that lovely? It's. Yeah. Very cupped, like, you know, just the hand just of um, cupping something very delicate, you know. Yeah. It's just beautiful. Mother, mother's love. Exactly, you know? yeah. There's something beautiful yeah. and just delicate about yeah. it. And intimate, isn't it? Like, it's mm. an intimate moment that she's captured through her work. Um, but it's so lovely to see that it's starting to get that acknowledgement. And, yeah. Um, I, I always feel like, I think I spoke about this a little bit before, because there's so many male artists that have to hugely influenced me from a... from day one um, but I always feel really strongly that we have to remember that there's there's also an amazing group of women like we've oh, spoken absolutely. about absolutely we've spoken about today. some amazing female yeah, artists absolutely exactly and just just to couple like just to find a balance that you know because human condition is expressed through yeah. the artist and I, I was reading there was an interesting quote and I'm trying to remember who this quote was from but it was you know, art doesn't have a gender, so the no. actual piece. Absolutely. But artists do. I wish someone might know this quote. <laughs> I got this quote. Yeah. I read it recently. Absolutely. Yeah. And I thought, yes, that is so true. And so, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Basically, and if we just think about 
art and emotion and we just think about it from a male perspective, only male artists, then we're forgetting about a whole group mm. of people, like women, Absolutely. that are, you know, expressing their, themselves. Everyone has to express themselves, yeah. to, you know, equally, I think. Absolutely, and like, I agree, there should be no gender to it, to the yeah. artwork, you know? Like, yeah, maybe the artists, that you know, they're either male or female, you know? Exactly. Any of that, but the artwork itself shouldn't be gender identified. I agree. Absolutely, at the and end of the day. It comes back to what we were saying earlier about if you look at an artwork and you don't read the label first, so just respond mm. to it by your personal response to the work. Exactly. And, yeah. then, and then if you want to know more, you can read the label and read the description. Mm. Um, but yeah, it shouldn't, yeah, like you said, it shouldn't have a gender. It shouldn't. Absolutely. It, no one else should interpret it for you. You should, no. you should be mm. able to have your own response to that piece, I think. Absolutely. And um, I guess as a uh, final question, so let's say as a final question, so do you think that it's important that art make that art needs to make us feel something? Do you think that should be the main objective as for art is that it needs to make us feel something as people? Do you think? That's a really good question because mm. <laughs> oh, so interesting. Like my mind's thinking. Like I guess, what's the point of art if we don't feel something? But, Absolutely. But then, then I don't always draw to make other people. feel I, I enjoy it for, from a personal, mm. from my experiences as a person that loves to draw and spend a lot of time drawing, I don't draw necessarily so that someone else will look at that piece and then feel something. Mm. I know that sounds strange. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's more that I love, I, I get such an emotional um, response and feeling from being able to draw and express my own feelings that way. Absolutely. But I'm also compelled to draw. I don't draw <laughs> just to sort of, to, it's just, I, I was thinking about this recently, like, um, so when we draw, you know, people draw every day, some people draw it like all the time, but we don't draw necessarily to share it. Some people do. Mm. Drawing, you could you could draw a whole pile of, um, you could have a whole pile of drawings that you never show anyone. And yeah. it's just personal. Absolutely. So what, why is the artist creating that work? It's to express their feelings, but... Exactly. But does that mean that the work has to create a response in someone else? That is such a huge and amazing question. That and is. it's really interesting and difficult to answer that question. But I think art, honestly, every piece of art makes me feel something. Yes. So on the flip side of that, um, I don't think I've ever seen a work that hasn't made me feel something. Yes. Like, you know, sometimes it could be confusion. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> it's like, what am I what? looking at? <laughs> what am I looking at? And like, and that's totally, that's excellent because that's getting a response from me. Mm. Like, I'm That's still a something. response, yeah. Yeah, I'm feeling something like maybe annoyance. Like, you can get annoyed, <laughs> like, I'm angry. Like, I can Why is angry. this looking like this? <laughs> yeah, why is it doing this? Like, so art can make you angry and, that, and that's totally, that's awesome as well. Yeah. It should make you feel everything. Like, art is about making you feel all the emotions. Like, um, like I honestly think, okay, I want to show you this, um, Carolee Schneemann. So when I was in high school, I used to spend a lot of time in the Queensland State um, Library. And okay. I found this book about Carolee Schneemann and um, this piece, it's called Interior Scroll from 1974-5. And she was a performance artist, or is, I'm pretty sure she's still with us. I hope she is. Mm -hmm. um, this piece is amazing. So it was a performance piece where Carolee, Carolee Schneemann stood naked okay. and then she unrolled a scroll from her vagina. Oh, wow. And, and, then, <laughs> and then she wrote, like, wow. the, there's the, the script is here of what she, she read from it. Okay. And it's really interesting. Uh, so it's, um, yeah. This is interesting. I saw my failings were worthy of dismissal. I'll be buried alive, my work lost. Jeez. Yeah, there's really, the train is death, as there is die in diet and die in digestion. I said my film is concerned with diet and digestion. So sorry, I'm just saying this in not in the order of, That's okay. of no, her work. Sorry. But yeah, I highly recommend that you look at her work. Um, so just, amazing wow i just i think because how how incredible would it be to be in the room while she was performing this piece 
Yeah, I, that would have been quite interesting. Yeah. yeah, it would. It gives me like goosebumps. I, would, I, would, whenever I see theatre or plays, performance, it can. I can just be. It might not be emotional, but it makes me really emotional. Yeah. You know, to see someone so like expressing themselves with, with in close proximity, it feels. Mm -hmm. Um, there's something really powerful that just made me think about another artist yeah. and I always forget how to say hopefully I don't say her name um, wrong <laughs> <laughs> I think there's also just a vulnerability like Isn't you know there? there's a strong vulnerability performing that to be to stand in, in, and to yeah. literally be removing a scroll from your vagina and then yeah. and you're saying these words that are your words and reading them aloud mm -hmm. amazing like so Marina now Abramovic, yeah, is that I how would you say her surname? Yeah, I, I think so. I hope I'm not pronouncing her surname <laughs> incorrectly, but she she's an incredible performance artist. In 2010, she did this piece called "The Artist Is Present." Okay. And she did this. She performed this at MoMA in New York. Um, again, I, th I think that some of the work was filmed. Um, it was over a couple of weeks where she literally sat at, in a moment, there was a line of people, you can see there's a line of people in the back of this image, mm -hmm. waiting to sit in front of her. Okay. And all they, all they, she wouldn't say a word. She just sat and looked at them. And okay. people would just sob. Like it was so emotional because being seen, when you think about, they, she was just sitting there looking at them. Mm. And, and the response was, either joy like there were smiles on the person's face some people were just weeping like weeping because it was like maybe it was just the moment it was such a big moment and she's looking at me like and yeah. if you admire Acknowledging, someone yeah yeah or it's that that kind of reflection when someone's looking at you and it makes you look inside and if you're unhappy yeah. um it, it was really interesting because it was like people that would you know sat with her it was only for a few moments i don't think it was a long period of time yeah yeah each person but um, she had people from, from you know, every, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming nearly every age group, you know, background. And there was, there was even actors, like famous people were even <laughs> singing in front of her. Um, so yeah, anyway, it's something, it's an amazing piece. And it was so, so genius. Yeah, like, it's really interesting. straightforward and basic. But yeah. an amazing thing because she had to, it was, it was pretty grueling on her physically. Because for um, oh. all day, she was sitting there for, oh, it was a three month performance. Oh my oh gosh, my oh no. I thought it was three <laughs> weeks. Oh my God, no, it says three months. So she, so it says here, she sat silently at a table for eight hours a day for nearly three months. Oh my gosh. One by one, members of the public were invited to sit in the empty chair opposite her. And they just looked at each other. And that was the piece. Um, and if you if you don't know her work, I highly recommend checking out her yeah, other work. That's... She's done other work where there was a piece where she was standing. She used to work with her ex partner, yeah. who they no, they no longer work together. And there was a piece where they both stood naked, um, and there was a small gap, and then people had to walk past in between. In between them. Okay. So like sometimes they would brush against them, you know, because it was a small space. Yeah, you just have to kind of like... Yeah, exactly. And it was such an intimate piece. There's works that she did, I think, where the... I think, if I, I hope I'm not saying this wrong, but... No, it's okay. It's I right. think there was a piece that she did where um, people were invited to hurt her, almost. Like... Oh, did you, that was you that artist. Have okay. you heard this? Yeah. yeah. Where, and, then, and then, like, so she just had to sit there and wait wait for how people would respond and it's kind of it the pete so the performance is thinking about how how would people um take advantage of that situation yeah like, yeah and um what are the intentions of your audience i guess and that would be quite intense because mm -hmm. you just don't know what someone would do and like so you're putting yourself in a vulnerable position where it's like you know oh you know do whatever you yeah. think and then it just kind of brings out like a person's darker side and it's kind of it's kind of a bit it's nasty and confronting yeah what people could do to you in that situation mm -hmm. yeah but there's another piece by yoko ono that she, it's called cut piece from 1964 um so she okay. sat i've seen the video it's so i found it so difficult to watch it was actually really hard to watch so she sat there with clothed she was wearing clothing and the uh, the performance was that people would come up there were scissors on the on a stage oh, in no. front of her yeah and they cut pieces of her clothing off Oh, okay. It, it was 
Oh, it was hard because it was one. I, I remember from seeing the performance that's on YouTube. If you want to, okay, find it. okay. I think it's on YouTube. Um, they one person almost thought it like thought it was funny, so he was just like cutting lots of her clothing off and laughing with his friends. And I just thought, oh, that's and, but, just creepy. But yeah. that's but that's what she was. I think what Yoko Ono was trying to make you feel and understand is what people were capable of. Yeah, and it you know, shows most, their darker side. Exactly, it just shows, and they were literally being filmed. Like she's again, um, a lot of performance art is filmed because that's the only way yeah. to capture that it the, happened. The essence you know, that it actually was a thing. Yeah. That's right. And later on, um, you know, without because the performance is usually a one-off thing. Um, you know, in, it's really fascinating to think about, like, how do you then, like, document it and then how do you exhibit that work later? Like, where, whereas a painting, once it's painted, hopefully it will last for quite a few years yeah. forever. <laughs> but a, a performance is such a, um, it's such an amazing kind of moment in time that it can be captured through photography or film. Absolutely. Um, but yes, so yeah, if I, you know, Yoko Ono was very brave to do that, but she was oh. also putting a mirror against society and sort of saying, what are you willing to do in this situation if exactly. I sit there and I sit completely still? And she's got this huge pair of scissors that you can see there yeah. on the stage that she's she's brave enough to allow someone to come up with those, those pair of scissors and cut items of clothing off yeah. her. Yeah, no, that's... Fascinating performance, though. That's interesting. Like, yeah, yeah it just brings out, like, just we as people, and I think, wow, that's intense. It is, isn't it? <laughs> definitely, I think, you know, as a whole thing, as just a summary, definitely art needs to, I think, makes us feel something at the end of the mm. day. It needs to make us feel, like, sad, happy, angry, confused, mm. and I think, yeah, it's just amazing, just, like, how one art form just can bring out so much emotion. It does. And say, um, but yeah, like, um, well, I think... That might be all the time we have for today yeah. so uh thank you so much nick for being part of the very first episode of uh let's have a conversation oh thank you jay and i really enjoyed talking to you oh it was <laughs> it's well, i always love talking to you like i think that's why when i started this series i'm like no i have to first episode has to be nick I, I'm, I'm not going to anyone else <laughs> for oh, thank that you. and um yeah so for everyone watching thank you for viewing the very first episode i really hope you've enjoyed it um, if there are, like, I think I would definitely love to open up to the, our viewers, like, if there are any uh, topics you'd love us to go into for this series, just let us know. Um, definitely, if you haven't checked out Nick's interview I did with her, I'll leave a video uh, link to the description to check it out. It was a very, as I said, it started this whole series, so yeah, it was oh, absolutely excellent. amazing. Uh, and yeah, thank you so much for watching, guys, and I will see you next time.